Perfect. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. Please chat any questions you have so that our presenter may answer them during the presentation or at the end. The chat button is located in the bottom center of your Zoom window. We will be posting today's webinar to our website and sending a post-webinar survey that we'd love for you to complete along with your continuing education certificate for all attendees. Cindy Lenhoff is joining us today as the director of the National Child Care Association. And Cindy, let me see if I can allow your video. All right, it doesn't look like it's gonna allow me to enable your video, sorry about that. Would you like me to go ahead and introduce Beth or would you like to take that away, Cindy? You know what, I will let you introduce Beth. That is fine with me. <laughs> All right, so it's my great pleasure to introduce today's presenter to you. She is a renowned international speaker, educator, and entrepreneur known for her passion for engaging leaders and inspiring teams. With a heart to serve early childhood educators through business and leadership strategy and team building, Beth Cannon serves as a keynote speaker, conference presenter, digital course creator, coach, and consultant. She's also the creator of Leaders Lounge, an online platform for early education and professional development. And with that, I'll turn it over to Beth to get our presentation started. Okay, thanks Storm and Cindy. It's great to be here and welcome. Um, I have no idea who's on the other side of the screen. So if I know you say hi, um, and if not, then I am glad to see you here. And if you are new to me, uh, this might be a new concept. If you are not new to me, you know that this uh, is some of the gospel that I preach a lot. Hey, Donna Jensen. Um, so Donna, you've heard, you've actually heard uh, content similar to this. I presented this um, at a conference where you and I were live. And so I've got a little bit of a different twist on it, uh, webinar style. So I'm excited to dive into the content today. So I just want to thank you all for showing up because leaders who level up are leaders who continue to grow and improve not only in their professional life, but, but in their personal life. I just think that if you are a leader, you're a learner. And so I hope to present some new concepts for you today that really open up your eyes and allows you to take a 360 view of your team, of your school, of who you are, and of where you are. So uh, this talk is called The Five Staples of a Staff Brand. I know that Storm is going to send out a workbook for this uh, later, but for now, um, be sure to grab a note. I hope you're a note taker, and this will give you some really good insight on what this looks like. So in today's session, we're going to talk about your core values and why they matter, because I'm a true believer that if you don't understand your deep-rooted why, and why you do what you do and why you have the team working for you. It's really hard to make these connections going forward. I also wanna help you understand what a talent attraction strategy is. Um, we're gonna talk about revamping your recruiting, overhauling some of your onboarding strategy, and then just some training tools that are really important, I believe, for you to successfully onboard your people. But this is what training is all about. People will forget what you said and people will forget what you did, but people will never forget the way that you've made them feel. So in, in terms of your staff, if you, you know, kind of shut down your eyes for a minute and you visualize who do you have on your team, collectively, they represent what is your brand. They're the way that they interact with each other, their voice, the way they speak to children, the way they speak to teachers, the way they speak to families, the way they speak to you as their leaders. This says a lot about the culture that you've tried to create. And oftentimes when you made people feel that they matter, you've done a really good job of creating a great culture in your center. And that's what this starts with. So my first question to you is, do the daily interactions between you, your team, your parents, and your kids <clears throat> reflect the experience that you want to deliver? Because as a childcare business, you deliver a service, but what you truly deliver is an experience. And so from the beginning of your training, from the time you post a job ad through the interview process, through the training and onboarding process, and then once they're in your school, what's the experience that you're trying to create? So what I hope that you understand is when you bring someone into the team, are they going to help to level up the team you already have? Or is your team dragged down and this person may just be kind of the stone 
that will crush them. So a lot of this is self-reflection, a lot of this is self-evaluation, but I wanna give you some really good strategies to move through. If you don't know what, it, whoop, sorry guys, whoop, forward. if you don't know what employer branding is, um, I'm gonna explain that to you and talk to you about why you should care about that. So this is what your staff brand is. It's your talent attraction strategy. You're not just posting ads on Indeed or Facebook or wherever you post ads and then hoping to cast a wide net and then maybe you catch like a few scrawny minnows, right? That's not really what you're looking to do. You want to have a strategy. And so the way that you, you know, post your jobs, the way that you handle your interviews, the way that you quickly move people through your funnel is going to say exactly who you are as an employer. So your staff branding is just the process of promoting yourself as a great place to work. You know, prior to COVID, there were so many people who were, were made famous and rich by teaching you how to market and grow your enrollment. And you know what? The child care centers who leaned in, and leaned in and listened and paid attention to how to grow their enrollment began to thrive and thrive and thrive, right? And, that, the, and those were the schools that set themselves apart. Now, it is an employee's market. And so you need to set your school apart as a great place to work, not just as a great place for families to bring your kids because you get all the shiny bells and whistles. You get the, what we like to call in the business world, consumer facing aesthetics of your business. These are the internal behind the scenes who your staff is. So in order to do that, you need to get clarity. So if you've got a piece of paper, I want you to take that piece of paper and I want you to write down this, the, the long left corner, the, the letters for the word clarity, okay? Clarity helps to make for better decisions. And I'm gonna give you some little key memory notes about how you can gain clarity moving forward with your team, okay? So let's move on and talk about, there's really three ways that we do this. Um, first of all, you gotta under, do your people understand that they were hired to deliver an experience. Let me give you a, let me give you a story. So if you, if you don't know much about me, my main business and my early childhood business I've had for the last 24 years, it's called Stretch and Grow. We're an enrichment program and we go into centers and we do fitness, dance, sports, gymnastics, music classes for kids. So today it's the first week of summer. We have a school we've done for 20 years, but they have all new leadership, right? I have a coach that goes in, she's been teaching for a long time. She's got her schedule. She goes in, and they say, we have no idea why you're here. We have no idea what you're doing. The teachers don't know. No one knows their schedule. And so she was a little bit gruff when they said, we don't know what we're supposed to be doing. And she was like, well, I don't know what you're supposed to be doing either. <laughs> back up the truck. That's not how we handle that. I'm going to have to go back and retrain and remind her, yes, you've got your schedule. Yes, we've communicated the details, but guess what? The people we communicated those details with quit last week. And so now you're dealing with someone else. It's brand new. It's the first week of summer. That's not our brand voice. So we had to have a discussion about what's the experience we want to deliver. Always give grace. Always give a smile. Always give the benefit of the doubt. These are things that are important that you don't always think about training your people on. So think about the way that the teachers interact with the parents. For example, do they know, have they been told Every time someone is in the building, a visitor, a parent, a family, a therapist, to stop and make eye contact with them and say, good morning, hello, how are you? That's important because if your teachers aren't nice to the people that are in the building, what kind of, of aura, what kind of vibe are you putting out, right? So think about that. Also, um, understand how who you hired and how they interact affect your brand. You know, my, my instructors, I mean, part of what we do is we are enthusiastic. We're there. We team up for the kids. We have integrity. We balance work and play. That's who we are. So what I learned today is that we need a little bit more refining on what our brand voice is and how do we present that going forward. So that is an important element. And then also, are you really intentional about building a values-based culture, and I'll break that down. So ask these questions to get clarity around your staff brand. So what do your actions say that you value? So leader, director, owner, administrator, what do your actions say that you value? So I want to ask you, are you delivering a healthy and strong leadership experience with your team? Or do you find yourself 
being a little more salty than sunny. I know I, I, some situations have made me a little more salty than sunny here lately because it seems like it's Groundhog Day and we're waking up to, oh my gosh, what, what's going to happen today? Um, but what kind of leadership experience are you delivering? And then what do you believe in? Like, I believe that you as the leader, you have to have your deep-rooted why so that when hard days come, you can remind yourself of what your deep-rooted why is. And then here's another thing. Do you know what the why is of your, your leaders, of your, your, your diehards, your ride-or-die people who have been with you and who are there with you? Like, do you know their deep-rooted why? Are you prepared to remind them of their why on hard days? And then for you, maybe you're at the top. Maybe there's no one to look around to promote, to support and encourage you. And that's just part of leadership, right? Sometimes it's lonely at the top because you look around and you're like, who's here to pat me on the back? Who's here to say, I would like to thank me for showing up for me, for believing in me, right? There's no one, there's no one that will be able to do that for you. So think about that. And then no, again, knowing, knowing your why, because your culture is an expression of everything that you value. So let's talk about this idea of clarity. So the idea of clarity is your, your core idea. So what is your brand all about? So under the C, C is your core idea. Are you play-based? Are you academic-based? Are you Montessori? Are you Reggio-inspired? Are you a combination? Um, where are you? What, what's your core idea, your mission, your vision for your team? So what is your brand all about? And do your teachers know that? Does your staff know that? Then the L. Okay, we're going to move through this pretty quickly. The L is, what do you love to talk about? Like, if you and I were to meet and have coffee, and I would say, what do you love about your business? Like, what, what is it that, that really, really fires you up? Like, for me, for my business, for Stretch and Grow, what fires me up is that I love that we get kids moving. I know the benefits we go in, that gives the teachers a break. It gives the kids an opportunity to, in a creative way, to use their imaginations and to burn out their energy so they'll have better nap time, right? And, and that's great for teachers. And, and they get moving and it helps them to be healthy. And I believe to my core that what we're doing is a good thing. And I love it. After all of these years, I'm so passionate about it. And I think that my love for that is what really ties my heart to early education leaders and teams is because I've been in centers so, so, so many times in many different environments over the years. And so I see and I get those unique struggles and challenges, right? And so, and I'm there when no one's looking, right? There's not, it's not when parents are coming in. Um, it's, it's not at pickup or dropout time. We're there in the middle of the day when you see the real hard, raw stuff. So I get it and I know it and I love it. And so I can say that. So what would you say that you love about your school and your mission? You know, do you believe in your mission? Okay. And then the A, who is your audience? And when I say audience, I mean the people that you are trying to hire. So, who, whoop, sorry guys. So who is your, who's your audience? When you look at your audience across the board, I want you to think in terms of the people that you wanna hire, the people that you want to bring into your team. Who are they? Where do they live? What are their qualifications? What's their energy like, okay? Um, so what, and, and I, always, I always ask this question and, and every time I ask this question, if you've been around the block for a little while, I think you would say you probably value character more than you value skills, because this is what we know. There's three things when you're looking to hire people, skills, knowledge, and talent. You can give them skills. You can impart knowledge to them. You cannot give them talent. So you need to decide what are the core values and talent of the people you want to bring into your center. And I would say that talent needs to be a true nurturing spirit a true heart for children, um, you know, integrity, the ability to show up on time, team, you know, willingness to be a team player, look at their character, look at who they've been when you talk to their references, what values are they going to bring? So questions around, you know, what, what do you value? Your values are made up of everything you love and everything that drives you crazy. So ask them the questions. What do you love? What do you love about working in education? What do you love about schools? What's a time you enjoyed a group of children? And then what drives you crazy? What makes you crazy? And then listen to the things that make them crazy. Are they the same things that make you crazy? Because for me, if they say tardiness, 
is my chalk is my, the nails on my chalkboard, I would immediately say you're hired, right? Because I don't like tardiness. And so if they say tardiness drives me, drives them crazy, I'm like, you 50% have won me already by just telling me that you don't like tardiness. So those are just some examples of the things that you might be looking for in your audience. <clears throat> and then your R, okay? Think about what your R is. What do they struggle with? Where are, where are they struggling? What are they struggling with? Do, whoops, sorry guys, doing your research, okay? Um, there's something that's making my slides go back and forth. So sorry about that. Um, but your research, what are their struggles? What are their achievements? What achievements have they made? What do they like? What do they don't like? What motivates them? What inspires them? And what problems do they need solved? Or what questions do they need answered? This is your staff. What are their issues that they're having right now? What can you bring to them and deliver to them? Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you guys another story because stories are always the things that we remember. And I love a good story. I was uh, doing a training for a group of directors down in Houston through a AEYC conference. And one Montessori teacher was in absolute tears because or director, she hired a teacher to come into her infant room. And the next day, both the infant teacher and the new teacher did not show up for work. She calls the, the, the old teacher, no response. She calls the new teacher and says, oh, I'm not coming in because I took a job down the street. And by the way, your other lady that I was there with is gonna quit. She told me how she hates this job and how miserable she is. So I didn't wanna be here either. And literally Houston, we have a problem, right? That's a culture thing. That director did not know that there was a cancer in her building spoiling what was happening spoiling the culture, spoiling the healthy culture. And you hear that as a director and you're just like, oh my gosh, worst nightmare. So hard to find people, so hard to keep people. She thought she had a good teacher. That good teacher was tired. When she finally got a hold of her, she was tired of having to work when she wasn't supposed to work. She was tired of having to pick up the slack from other people. She felt like she wasn't valued. She felt like she wasn't respected. And the truth is the poor director just begged her to work because she literally had no one else to work. And I think you probably, if you're watching this, you've been around for a minute, you've experienced and you felt the same thing. So again, getting a pulse on your teacher and making sure that when you're having to ask people over and over and over again to sub and step in and fill in and step up, that you are doing a good job of showing not just appreciation, like a Starbucks gift card or whatever, but true gratitude for who they are and how they're showing up for themselves. I think that is so important as well. Okay, now the slides don't wanna move, awesome. There we go, okay. Next is your, uh, your ideas. What ideas do you have for your staff? How can you motivate them? How can you develop them? How can you improve, int improve intention? And how can your staff contribute to your core ideas? So think about your ideas. And we're gonna come back to that because I am actually gonna give you a lot of ideas and a lot of actual strategies today during this webinar, but think about your timeline. Um, using the ideas you'd like, I want you to create a timeline. Now it's summer and maybe you have schoolers in your building and maybe your summer is crazier than it is during the year, but maybe, just maybe, summer allows you as the leader to step back just a little bit, take some time and work on some projects. I know Donna, who's watching, she's in our group coaching program, Sector Strategy Academy, and we're working on a big project to take our manuals and put them into modules. I'm going to share with you a little bit about that. I've got a free guide for you guys to teach you how to do that a little bit later. But now is the time to start making those changes. You know, everything starts in education over when the new school year comes. So this is a great opportunity for you to truly dive deep and evaluate and get clarity on who you want to be next year. Because guess what? Who do you want to be September 1st? Think about that. What things need to change? What things need to happen? between now and September 1st, so that when September 1st rolls around on the calendar, you are more of who you want to be than you are right now. I'm gonna repeat that again. You wanna be more of who you want to be than you are right now. The only way that's gonna happen is for you to make some effective changes. So think about your clarity on that timeline and then finally your why. We talked about that. I'm not gonna belabor the point because of time, but again, Know your why, know your brand's why, and how can you incorporate your why into your brand? And that is going to help you nail down what your staff brand looks like. So a few ways that you can build intentional value. I want you to know this. Compliance is the least important thing when it comes to building culture. At the top, 
of your culture building funnel is connections. The relationships that your people have on your team, that's the glue that's going to hold them together. That is one of those intrinsic motivations that keep people together because guess what? It's not what you pay them. We can never pay we can never pay educators enough. We just can't. No matter how much stimulus comes, whether it is sustainable or not, we're probably not going to be able to pay early educators what we believe that they are worth. So we've got to figure out what, and, and money is not everyone's biggest motivator, right? I mean, obviously we want people to have a living wage and to be able to live comfortably, but they're not driving private jets to the Bahamas over the weekend. So people who do this job want to do an impact. So make sure that you can find people who connect with that. And then your culture, of course, the, you know, the, the formal, the things that you see on the top and then the informal, the underneath the surface, what's your culture like? Clarification. Are you clear on the roles and expectations that you have set for them? And finally, it's compliance, the rules and regulations. So that's, those are just some cues on how to build that intentional value. And now we're going to shift gears. We're moving on to the second segment. So if you're watching, I know that adult attention spans are right about 20 minutes and we have been talking about 20 minutes. So I want you to stand up, maybe shake your shoulders around, get a drink of water or whatever it is that you're drinking. Cheers. And we're going to move on to the next topic, which is the, which is the, called the components of retention. So I gave you some ideas on getting clarity around your brand. Now I'm moving into talking about the components of retention because that is what we want. We want to keep our rock stars in their seats and we want to bring in new people that are going to align with the brand that we have created. So your idea is your ideally defined employee avatar, right? So think about this when you're looking in terms of who they are, you know, take a look at their age and their generation. You know, on my team, I have all four generations from boomers to Gen Z. And I think it's beautiful. They all bring different gifts and talents. Um, their, you know, their race and ethnicity, if you're focused on uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, you know, maybe take a look at your staff and do you need to diversify? Do you need to shake that up a little bit? Uh, their gender, their level of education, literacy, um, what their geographic locations are. I mean, gas is hard right now. So hiring someone that lives 45 minutes from you might not be sustainable. So really pay attention to geographic locations because I'm hearing a lot of schools are losing teachers who have found jobs closer to home. Even though they love your culture and they love working for you and with you, can you figure in some sort of gas reimbursement during this time while they're having to come to work? Pay attention to that. I know it may affect your profit margins, but how much is it gonna cost you to replace that person who lives 45 minutes away if they're a true asset to your team? And, and then uh, their economic requirements, you know, maybe you pay a wage that a single mom with three kids could sustain herself and maybe you don't, you know, keep that in mind. You don't want to offer someone a job that you know might not be able, they might not be able to, to live on that wage. And I know that that is a real concern as well. And then of course their temperament and the references. So that is how you define who your idea is. And as we break down these components of attention, retention, there's really three of them. It's attract, engage, and train. So we're going to break down each one of these, and I'm hoping to give you some ideas, some fresh insight on what to do that. So on the attraction, again, who is it that you want to hire? Where are you going to find them? Um, a, a couple of little things on Indeed, because I know for whatever reason, across the board, across the country, Indeed tends to be one of the number one platforms to where we are able to um, to find people, right? That's where people are hiring. That's where people are, are looking. And so as you're walking through posting out your job ads, Indeed has like some shady kind of crazy ways to get people to pay for ads. And then at the end of the month, you're like, how come I just paid Indeed $600 when I didn't even think I sponsored a job? Here's the hack. So if you're multitasking, come back. They do not charge you within 24 hours. So if you find a good candidate, capture their information, communicate with them outside Indeed and decline them. And that's going to save you some money. Don't tell Indeed if Indeed's watching. Don't tell them that I said that. But that is a way to kind of re, to kind of a workaround of having to pay an outlandish Indeed bill because chances are you're going to connect with that person. Fifty percent of people don't even connect back or respond. So are you quick to respond? What are you going to offer them, and how are you going to train them? Another thing too, and again, if you're making notes, jot this down. Quickly call them, like within minutes. Make sure that during the day, someone's checking that email, someone's watching as those applicants are coming in. Pick up the phone and call them. 
with a happy voice. Let them know you're so excited. Show them your energy. Let them know what you love about your center. Get them in for an interview. And I would say do the first interview on Zoom. That's just me. I'd say, hey, I'd love to send you a link to my calendar so we can hook up face to face. And then you do your initial interview on Zoom. That's going to save you time, especially if you're if, if people are going to know so. Because again, if half people are no showing, that's going to save you time of waiting for someone to walk in the door and kind of stalling your energy while you're waiting on that. So Calendly is free. You can set up your Zoom, your personal Zoom room to Calendly. You can send them your link. They can go on quickly, schedule a Zoom interview with you, and then you can either eliminate them or move them on to the next. So um, we'll talk about that in a little bit more, but I want to make sure that if I get when I get to that part that you know what you're what you're what you're in for. So Zoom interviews initially. Identifying the talent, character, competence, chemistry, and culture. Talked about the others. This is what I want you to remember and note. That part, chemistry, it's very judgy. So don't send me an email and say, Beth, you sounded very judgy, Judy McJudgy. Yes, I do. You absolutely are judgy about who you bring into your center to work with your children and how they are going to affect your team and your talent. A hundred percent, you're judgy. You are. It's the heart. You don't have to judge their appearance, but if someone comes in and doesn't have a good, clean, professional experience, appearance, they're not going to probably fit in well with your brand. And if that's how they're going to show up for an interview, you need to be mindful of that, how they're going to show up for you in your center if you have a dress code or if personal and professional appearance is important to your brand. So you know what's important to your brand. But here's the thing, too. Do you like them? You have to like them. You have to talk to this person and think to yourself, we can hang out. Like I would want to have coffee with this person. I, I genuinely like what this person had to say. We are dumb if we hire people that we don't think that we would like, because guess what? You probably like most of the people on your team and, and people have different chemistry. So there are different environments for people. So set those people free and save the job for someone who is going to really work well. And don't think to yourself, but I, someone's better than nothing. We're not dipping into the gene pool deep, deep, deep. If it's not going to be a good fit, because you know, it's going to cost you money, time, energy, and effort. So I want to encourage you to be extremely wise and discerning when it comes to hiring your people. Craig Groeschel tells us that your culture is a combination of what you create and what you allow, and that your values create your culture. This quote, I preach the gospel of it because it is true. And my friends, we have allowed some stuff to go on in the last couple of years. And I have not talked to one single early education leader who will not admit to allowing things that they would have never allowed in February 2020 because they don't want to lose people. And it's that fear. And so we've operated out of fear in this episode of Stranger Things that we have found ourselves living in in this world because some of the things that we fear the most have happened. Like, what if a global pandemic shuts down my business? Well, guess what? It did but you're still here. I'm still here for a reason. So for whatever reason, we're still here and we're still standing, but I want you to remember my friends, what we allow creates a culture and sometimes it can create a negative culture. Okay, moving on to number two, engage. What is your discovery process? So as I mentioned, I want you to do those initial interviews on Zoom to save you time. And if people can't get on a Zoom I want you to think about this. Very few people can't have access to a smartphone or some sort of computer. If they can't and they won't, then of course have them come in because you don't want to lose a good, a good employee, you know, especially maybe a 60 year old grandmother who doesn't have a smartphone, doesn't want a smartphone or a laptop that by golly, she's going to be that best baby infant teacher that will rock those babies and love those babies or potty train those toddlers that you have ever seen. So I would never say discount someone, um, but I would say go with the Zoom call at first. And then um, of course, you've got your discovery meet, which is a face-to-face -face that you'll have with them. And then your discovery day, which is if you can somehow in your center, have them in as a visitor, never of course, alone with the children or counting ratio or anything like that. You, every state is different with what they allow for this, but you know, maybe if there's some way for you to have a discovery day or a team teach to see how they interact with the children, I know that's always very helpful. So maybe take a screenshot of this. Um, best discovery questions. 
Um, I love the tell me about a time question. So in the discovery process, and when I say discovery, this is what you're discovering if they're going to be a good fit. And, and you're intentional. Like if you were going to meet, let's say your child brings home someone they think they want to marry, like you're going to ask some hard questions, right? You're going to tell me about a time, tell me about your family, you know, tell me about a time when. Same thing with your employees, you know, get some information. Um, I love the, you know, scenario questions. Um, one of my favorites is reflect on something you could have done better. Because if someone can't tell you, guess what? That's a not self-aware person because I don't know any living, breathing, self-aware person on this planet that would not reflect on something that they could have done better. And I think that is an important question to help them realize is, are they the kind of person that takes accountability for their mistakes? Because we all can say something we would have done better. And I think that's an important question to try to ask. And then, of course, values-based inquiries. Um, we have our core values on our website. And so when I have our initial setup for our Zoom calls, for our first discovery call, I say, I'd love for you to hop on our website and take a look at our core values, because we're going to talk about that in our call. And then, you know, we say, like, you know, you looked at our core values, like, what were, what were your thoughts on that? What did you think? What, what resonated with you? You know, how, how, do you, how do you think you could live that out if you were to come and work on our team? And then, of course, skills assessments. If there's any true hard skills that you need them to have, you're going to want to ask them those questions. But for the most part, what I'm finding in, in early education, it's the soft skills, it's the interpersonal skills, it's the wisdom, it's the discernment, it's the mindfulness and the self-awareness that make the best employees. Because my friends, we are not leading February, 2020. We are leading in a very different time. And this is what most leaders that I know, here's the thing, the self-aware leaders that I know, they don't know anything anymore. <laughs> They're like, I don't know anything. You might be right, you might be right. I don't know, I don't really know anything. Um, there's been just a wave of humility that has fallen heavy, heavy, heavy on most leaders that I know. But guess what? It's a good thing. It's a good thing to step back and reevaluate and say, you know, I used to know that, but I'm not so sure that's the way I think anymore. That's the way I believe, or that's the way that I would process this situation. And so really keep that in mind when you're look, when you're interviewing people. Um, think about those skills, the hard skills, yes, but I think the soft skills are super important. Um, another thing that I will tell you, it's a tool that I super, super love to use. And the tool that I super, super love to use is called Trello. And if you are not new to me, then you know that I am a Trello fellow. I, I, Trello is a project management. It's free. It's a free tool on the internet. Um, it is a project management board and, um, it's a great way that I use to track applicants when they're coming into my funnel. I use it for a ton of different things. And I've got a little course on our website that, that shows you different ways to use it. But um, when I use it in my applicant tracking system, this is what it looks like. So think of a bulletin board. And on that bulletin board, you've got lists. And underneath the lists, you have cards. Okay, And in those cards, you can put data rich information. So like the first list would be what are my tools? So every time I have to hire, rather than me get on Indeed and like retype or copy and paste or whatever, I go right here, I click on my what I call swipe files. And that's where you just swipe to copy and paste, pop it in there. It's very easy and visual to know where it is. I've got my job descriptions. I hope that your job application is not paper, my friends. If you're hearing this and you're asking people to come into your center and fill out a paper application, a, you probably lost 80% of the people that might be a good fit for your job because most people aren't doing that and you're wasting their time by asking them to come in. And this is what we trick ourselves into thinking. But if they come in, I can see how they look. I can see how they dress. I can see how they act. I can see, yes, all of those things are true, but you have to focus on efficiency, being efficient, get the Zoom call. Then if they're a good fit, then send them a link. No one wants to come in and fill out your paper application. It's a waste of everyone's time. So be efficient, honor their time, value their time, and get some sort of out. Even if you go to Google Forms and you can do one for free. If you don't have one, research or, or go, go, go Google, Google Form job application, and you'll get one. So have a link that you can send people for your job application. So all the links are there. The next step is where am I going to post jobs? So every place that you post jobs, make a card. And then you can put your website, you can put your, um, your history of posting, you can put your passwords, everything in there. But here's where it gets good. 
you're going to create your applicant tracking system. So someone comes into your funnel, you create a card with their name. And if you can get a screenshot of their picture or social media with their picture, you create a picture for that person. And then all of the communication between you, your assistant, you can communicate inside Trello with your people, right? But you create a card for everyone. And as they're walking through the discovery process, they either get moved to hired, out of the game, or potential pipeline for the future. Then when you're like, okay, oh my gosh, you need to hire someone, you've got a card on all of your people. So you're not saving emails and files. You're not going back and searching for resumes. Everything is right inside Trello. So again, Trello is free. You can set up the board to look just like this, and it is a great resource for you. So all I'm going to say about Trello, it's my favorite project management tool. Now, let's talk about training. We're going to do a poll because what I want you to know is that a, there is significant employee turnover when the onboarding process is bad. So Storm just popped up a poll for us and it says, do you still use the paper manual for your onboarding process? Most early education leaders I find are doing that. Um, yep, look here. So far coming in, 86% of you guys. So 86, 84, okay, it's shifting a little bit. A few of you guys are using, are, are not using paper manuals, and that's true. So let me talk to you about why you don't want to do that anymore. Orientation is a one, it's a one-time deal, right? Orientation is a one-time deal. Onboarding is a series of events that includes the orientation. This is what you're wasting your time on, sitting down and having story time with adults reading in the paper manual, hoping that because they heard you say it once, they're going to remember it forever and they won't. When you bring people into your funnel, you, you hire them and then you onboard them. This is your investment zone. Now, I know that you guys are probably spending, by the time it's all said and done, $10,000 on onboarding a new employee because of what you, the expenses that you pay, your time, your recruiting efforts, your training, your onboarding, the, the pay that it takes for your mentor teachers, all of these things. It's expensive to hire new people that you're investing in them. But then once they've trained, then now you get this return on your investment. And that, my friends, is where you want to see yourself soar. They go from engaging to recognition to contributing, and then they can be your mentor. So that is very important. So when you're looking at your training process, I want you to think, of, think about your manual. And when's the last time you updated it, right? These are questions for you. You don't have to answer them in the chat, but questions for you. Um, when did you last update it? Was it before COVID? In my group coaching program, I had a director say just yesterday, she, she bought her school 14 years ago from her boss. She was working there, bought the school 14 years ago. She, the owner of a school who worked there, has never fully read the manual. And I would be willing to guess that so many people do because we just think of it as a tool, right? My friends, it is a lifeline. Your, your, what your, your orientation process, your onboarding process is a lifeline. It is a retention strategy to connect your people. So think about what's not working with your onboarding. And then do you have limiting mindsets? Because a lot of us as educators, we don't always have the most progressive mindsets. We're like, oh, but gosh, this is working. Oh, I don't want to change. Oh, oh, here's the best. I don't have the time to change. I don't have time to do that. You exponentially improve your time going forward if you put systems in place now so that you don't have to do that manual orientation, that you don't have to sit there and have adult story time with people. So it's a big piece of your process. Technology matters. Switching from manual to online training is going to consolidate all of your resources, giving you better training outcomes, and it's going to add value to your center. So Roy Vaden says this, and if you like books, okay, if you're, if you're taking notes and you're, and you're a note taker, write this down. Roy Vaden, Procrastinate on Purpose is the name of his book. And in that book, he said, automation is to time what compounding interest is to your money. Meaning that you, you invest money now when you're young, if you're young, I'm not young, but maybe some of you guys are young. You, inv you invest your money when you're young and then that compound interest grows your money. So by the time you retire and you get closer to my age, you've got some more money. And so think about your time. When you invest that time, when you're young, when you have, you know, when you can create that space, You'll have more time going forward into the future because you put systems in place going back. 
So Roy Vaden in that book also says, what do you need to automate, delegate, and eliminate concerning your onboarding? So again, that is a retention strategy and it has everything to do with your staff brand. So why did your paper manual? There's a lot of research-based reasons. So if you like research and you like numbers and you like percentages, snapshot that slide because it's going to tell you it's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. Your employees are going to stay longer because they retain that info and they're going to have greater satisfaction when they're onboarding into a job. Because guess what? The time that you spend with them, I'm not saying sacrifice this connection time. I'm saying create some videos, create some slide decks, create some courses so that they can engage in those courses and then you can spend time connecting with them. Uh, because this is what Marcus Buckingham says. He says that you cannot produce excellence if you cannot reproduce excellence. So think about that. Are you a person of excellence? And so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for just a minute because I think that it's valuable and very, very, very important to know that if you as a leader feel like you're slacking, if you feel like you're a slacker as a leader, I don't, this is not to shame you, but if you're not showing up and giving the effort that you know that you need to give, you're not going to see the effort out of your employees. They're going to follow your lead. And I would encourage you to be truly transparent with your people and sit down and have feedback sessions, especially with your top, with your top leaders. And when I say feedback, I mean, I, I want to tell, I want to talk to you. I want, I want to tell you what I think I'm doing well. And I want you to, and, and what my opportunity for growth is. And then I want you to tell me what I'm doing well. And then I want you to tell me what my opportunity for growth is. Because guess what? We all have room to grow. And I sat in a room with all of my leaders just this past week, yesterday. And I, and I said, this is what I think I'm doing well. This is where I need to grow. And they, I went around the room and I let them all tell me as their leader what I'm doing well and what I need, where I need to grow. And let me tell you what they said. It was, it was valuable to me because it said, you know, sometimes there's so much information. I feel like we don't get that information. And then we've missed the boat on that. And I was like, and almost every one of them said that because I've got so many things going on. And I think I've got systems in place. I've got systems in place. But what it reminded me is, is that I need, to stop and have those knowledge checks. And I need to check for understanding. So as we're going into a new week, as we're going in ahead of time, over, 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 over communicate, but make sure that you've got the foundational pieces. Because when I found that I go over communicate, they'll be like, oh yeah, forgot that. Oh yeah, that's an important, that is an important piece. But you know, are you brave enough to truly sit down with your people and ask them to honestly tell you what you're doing well, and what your opportunity for growth is. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to share my screen with you guys one more time. I've got a download for you. And then we're going to wrap it up and have a Q&A Q &A time. So Storm, if you would drop this into the comments. there, I've got an ultimate checklist. It shows you how to take your paper manuals, put them into modules using all free tools on the internet. So you don't need any systems. I mean, they're there are, I mean, of course, there are platforms out there that you can use, and I've got a course that shows you detail, a lot of details for how to do it, but if you just want to kind of explore this concept, go to that M2M checklist.bethcanspeaks.com, and that will give you a kind of a broad overview of what it looks like to convert that project, because my friends, the way you train your staff is the way your staff is going to act and interact. You are hiring people who have been taught by Zoom who don't even have textbooks. My son just graduated from Baylor University, last two years of college, zero textbooks, zero. They're learning online. So you've got to progress with the way that people are learning. Our country, our world really took like 10 years of technology and learning and like shrunk it into like six weeks. And so we just exponentially grown. And so I just want to encourage you, even if it feels hard, even if it just feels like a beat down, I want to encourage you to really look at your training tools, look at your hiring system, your attraction, your training and your retaining systems, and really focus on how can you better serve not only the staff that you have now to help them create a strong brand, but how can you better serve the staff that are coming for you? I have to believe they're coming for you in the next three, six, nine months or infinity and beyond, you know, how, however long you plan to have your center. So I hope that today you found some really solid nuggets. Every time I treat, every time I teach, I try to make sure that you have the opportunity to take notes, that you have the opportunity to take some things that you're really going to think about 
and then the opportunity to move forward and take action. So what actions can you take from what I've shared with you today? Look at your notes and think about the actions that you can take as we're moving forward. Because if you just listen to a webinar, nothing's gonna change. But if you take information from someone who has lived the struggles, because trust me, my friends, I don't teach anything that I have not lived and learned. And so all of these things I've lived and learned, I'm a constant um, systems process improvement person, because if I have a pain point, I wanna make that pain go away. And so many pain points that I had along the way, no one reading the manual, no one understanding what's gonna happen with onboarding. And are we perfect? Absolutely not, but guess what? I know this, I know we're better. I know we're better today than we were yesterday. And we're better tomorrow because I sat in a room with my leaders and I heard feedback about myself and opportunities for growth and changes, even more process improvements that I'm looking forward to making. So I would love to answer any questions you guys have. Storm, did you see any that popped up in the chat that, um, that I can answer? Just a lot of love, Beth. Everyone really Aww. appreciated what you shared. Uh, they were excited to learn about the authors that you provided, the quotes. Uh, they loved the CLARITY acronyms. So thank you so much for everything that you presented today, this wonderful information. I know that I got a lot of little good tidbits that I'm going to go and implement with my team. So thank yes. you so much for your time today. If you guys do have anything that you want to ask Beth, please go ahead and chat that now. Implement yes, and I was just response. scrolling through. Lisa, I'm glad you love the Zoom meeting first. It is brilliant, girl, I just saved so much time. So much, so much time. Um, and then Jenny asked for a list of interview questions. Um, let me see if I can go back and find that screen with my interview questions. Perfect, and I will drop that in the chat right now. Oh, you can drop it in the chat. Okay, yes. awesome. And then I'm, I'm assuming, Storm, that you'll um, you'll share the chat, right? You'll, yes, you'll share, we'll share the chat with you. Okay. So if anyone requires some additional follow-up, we will go ahead and ensure that that's taken care of. Yeah, and if, and if you're not on my email list and you want to be, drop your email in the chat and I'll make sure that I add you to that. If you, if you downloaded the M2M checklist, that'll put you on my email list and um, and we usually just send out emails every, you know, every couple of weeks or so. And you know, it's so funny storm is I sent one out a few weeks ago. Most people, I mean, who even opens and reads our emails, right? Half the time, I know you send emails all the time too, right? Who reads the emails? I don't even know. But for whatever reason, this email, it was called fired or disqualified. And I had to release a really great teacher because she disqualified herself because of numerous absences and, you know, just lots of different things. And I just kind of shared the story because I thought, you know, if I'm really experiencing this, other people are, I bet 30 people reply to that email. I couldn't even believe it. But the, the things that I'm experiencing that I was experiencing with this particular employee, you know, constant excuses and calling out and not, not being able to show up for herself and not being a really good team player. It's so where we are right now. And so I just love to realize when I'm in a pit, <laughs> I'm not alone. And I've also learned that sometimes we need friends that will crawl down in the pity party and sit on a velvet couch and drink coffee or wine or whatever it is that you want to drink, right? No judgment, not judgy, but you know, we, we, we want people to crawl down in this pit with us. But the longer that I do this is I need people who are not going to let me slink in a pit. Like they'll let me be there for a minute and they'll be like, okay, get up, walk out of that grave. You know, you're not, you can't stay in that pit. Tomorrow's a new day. And if we're going to stay in this, we have to continue to realize that not everyone is our people and our people, our staff brand is, is not people who don't show up for the team. One of our core values is we team up for the kids. And so I think it's so, so very important that, um, that we're paying attention to the tension on our team and, and, and not being people of inaction, but being people who are relentless about pursuing a healthy and positive culture and trust that if you if people disqualify themselves, that there are people who are your people. And once you find them, you're going to really see a difference, not only in your, in your kids, but in the joy that you have about your job when you have people who are truly on the same page as you. Well, that's beautiful. Thank you so much, Beth. Absolutely. All right. Just a lot of good emails coming in. A lot of thank yous. Uh, some praise on the video modules and assessments that you've put together oh, for some of our attendees. So wonderful, wonderful. 
If there's anything else that we can address today, we're happy to. If not, please go ahead and email the NCCA at necpa.net or reach out to Beth. I'll put Beth's contact information down here, but if you've shared your email, that will get to Beth directly and she can add you to her mailing list. I can address any of your questions. So thank no. you again so much for your time today, Beth. Um, if it's okay with you, I'll go ahead and wrap us up and give everybody a couple minutes back in their afternoon. We encourage everyone to access the ultimate checklist and contact Beth, Beth about her services to support your growth goals. We'll be posting today's webinar recording by Monday to our website and sending you that post webinar survey along with your continuing education certificate. We hope you can join us next month for our monthly webinar. Please look for an invitation for that soon. And thank you again, everyone. Thanks, Storm. Thanks, Cindy. Bye-bye. Thank you, Beth. It was great. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.